Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Really excited about today's video. Today we're going to learn about where to place smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. Everything that I'm going to teach you today is going to be subject to your area, so just use this video for educational purposes only and work with your local inspectors, including the electrical, building, mechanical, whoever is over this, because every area is a little bit different. I'm going to give you kind of a 30,000 feet view, and then you need to dial it in specifically for your area. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. First off, you're going to be required to have smoke detectors on every structure. Residential structure, I'm talking about one, two, and multifamily dwelling units. Now, if this is a retro application, meaning you're doing some retro work, they might let you buy with battery powered only. And that's cool. I'm cool with that. That's how they do it in our state. But if we're doing a new construction setting or, you know, adding a, an addition to a structure, it's likely going to have to be hardwired. And let's talk about when you're required to have carbon monoxide detection. Now, this is not an all-inclusive list, but this is an example of some times that you may need carbon monoxide detecting as well. If you have an attached garage, whether it's below the structure, the side of the structure, or above the structure, if you have an attached garage. If you have a wood-burning stove, even if you don't use it. If you have a stove insert, even if you don't use it. If there is gas to the structure at all, even if it's capped off, even if you don't use it, you're likely going to have have to have carbon monoxide detection as well. So let's go ahead and get into the actual places where you're going to be required to have this protection. So the first one is going to be inside of all bedrooms. So if it meets the definition of a bedroom, then you're going to be required to have smoke detector protection. Now, your inspector may require, if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, even though it maybe doesn't have a closet, but they feel like somebody's going to be sleeping in there, they might require it in a room that even doesn't meet the definition of a bedroom. And this one makes logical sense, doesn't it? Where are people sleeping? They're not conscious. You know, they're, they're out, they're sleeping. And we need to let them know that, hey, there's something going on in the structure, whether it be smoke or carbon monoxide, letting them know that there's a fire or there's a hazard. That makes sense there. Now let's jump to the second place that you're going to be required to have to do it. And this is outside of a bedroom, outside of all bedrooms. Now, looking at this picture here, we're going to imagine that both of these doors lead to a bedroom. These are pretty close together, so I could put one smoke detector outside of this bedroom and it satisfy code. Again, make sure you work with your local ordinances. All of these smoke and carbon monoxide detectors have to be installed according to the manufacturer's instructions based off of distances and how far they're accurate and so on and so forth. Also, you may have local ordinances or they may have adopted a newer building code that will even modify this. But historically, if you had two rooms side by side, you could put one smoke detector out in this hallway and it would satisfy both of these rooms. Now, if I had a really long hallway, you know, maybe 15, 20, 30 feet across, maybe one smoke detector wouldn't satisfy both of these rooms. The biggest thing when you're laying these out is just be logical. Which way is the smoke going to travel? Up those stairs, hit that smoke detector, notify both those rooms. It should also activate the two smoke detectors that you've installed inside of those rooms. But let's say I have a hallway and it's a shorter hallway and there's like a partition or a door in between. Well, in my opinion, if I was your inspector, I would want one on each side of that door outside of each bedroom. So you have to have a smoke detector that's going to service both of these bedrooms. Now let's talk about the third place that you're going to be required. And I use this silly picture because it has multi levels on there and it has everything that I need to talk about on it. So when we look at this, they're going to need a smoke detector at least on every level, whether you're living in there or not. So we have to have one on the first floor. We have to have, a, even if there's no bedrooms on the second floor, you have to have a minimum of one on the second floor, a minimum of one on the third floor, a minimum one on the fourth floor. Now this structure here has a bonus room and it also has a basement. Well, in my opinion, you would need one in both of these areas. So you may say, well, this is just a bonus room or an unfinished attic. Well, if it looks like it could be a finished space, in my opinion, put one. If it doesn't or your inspector doesn't require it, work with your inspector on it. You cannot have too many 
smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. So I hope this video added a little bit of value to you. If your area is a little bit different, we would love to learn and grow together. I'm just giving you guys a blanket 30,000 feet high, looking at smoke and carbon monoxide detection. Uh, it's one of the greatest things that you can do for a home. Saves hundreds and hundreds and millions of lives over the span of the life of the smoke detector, the carbon monoxide detector. And it's one of the greatest things that we put inside of homes. But we want to grow together. And if your area is more stringent or less stringent, we would love to hear about it down in the comments below. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and my bargain is that these videos will add value to you, and you will in turn add value to others. If there's anything I can do to help you in life or business, you can always just email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.